What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at what a healthcare data analyst is. Now, before we jump into it, yes, I'm growing out my beard a little bit. My wife said she wanted me to grow it out. And so I said, of course, I will do that for you. And so I kind of feel like this is like five years ago when I first started my channel, although it may get a little bit bigger, we'll see. But in this video, we're gonna be diving into healthcare analytics. This is actually gonna be an entire series of about four videos. I'm gonna talk about what healthcare data analytics is in this video. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how you can become a healthcare analyst. And then in the third video, we're gonna take a look at actual healthcare data. And then in the very last video, I'm gonna show you a lot of great resources and places that you can get real healthcare data sets and you can work with them and you can learn how to become a healthcare analyst. Now in this video, we're gonna be diving into what a healthcare analyst is. I'm gonna talk about what they actually do, what kind of data they work with, what kind of companies actually hire healthcare analysts. And they'll talk about what tools and experience and education that you need to become a healthcare analyst. So a healthcare analyst is gonna be someone who specifically works within the healthcare system, working with healthcare data. Now I myself worked on the data side of healthcare companies for about five years. I never had the title of healthcare analyst, but I worked with a lot of people who did. And I basically did the same work that they did. My title was just data analyst. So it really just depends on the company and what they're calling it. But genuinely, I would have called myself a healthcare analyst because I was doing the exact same work. So it really just depends on the company and what they call it because some healthcare companies will just call it a data analyst and some will call it a healthcare analyst. It just depends on what they call it at that specific company. So why do companies actually hire healthcare analysts? Well, hospitals and pharmaceutical companies and doctors, they collect a lot of data on their patients and the claims and the insurance side. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but there's so much data that is collected and they wanna actually use that data, which every good company should wanna use their data effectively. So they hire healthcare analysts to come in and work with their data and make use of it. Let's take a look at some companies that might hire a healthcare analyst. You may be working inside of a hospital like Johns Hopkins or the Mayo Clinic or just your local hospital. It is very common for a lot of hospitals now to actually have a data person actually working inside of the hospital. You may also work on the insurance side of healthcare. So something like Cigna, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, or even your local insurance company. Next, you may work for a pharmaceutical or a biotech company. So these are companies that actually produce and research pharmaceuticals within the healthcare industry. These could be companies like Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer. Those are some of the bigger pharmaceutical companies that most people have heard of. You could also work for a government agency or a public health organization. That could be something like the World Health Organization, or if you're living in the United States, you could work for a government agency like Medicaid or Medicare. Another one could be pharmaceutical distribution. This is something that I worked in for many years. These would be companies like McKesson, Cardinal Health, Sen Cora, formerly known as Amerisource Bergen, and that's where I worked for many years. And I know I just threw a ton of companies and different industries within healthcare at you, but honestly, that's maybe half of them because there's a lot more. But those ones are definitely the bigger ones that most people are going to work at. So now let's talk a little bit about what a healthcare analyst is gonna do at those specific types of companies because in all of those companies, the data is gonna be very, very different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select just a few of those companies and talk about what you might do as a healthcare analyst at that company. So let's start with a company that most people have heard of, that is Pfizer. They're one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. So the company that I used to work with, we actually had contracts with Pfizer. We would distribute a lot of their drugs, but I worked really closely with a lot of doctors that worked for Pfizer. So these were clinical doctors who worked on the data side of the drug. They had entire teams that they led that included data engineers, data scientists, healthcare analysts, and a bunch of other people. And what they would do is they would conduct these different studies on these drugs to see the efficacy of how well these drugs performed in a lot of different circumstances. So for example, let's say they're making a new type of Tylenol. That might be something that most people will be aware of. They're testing a new type of Tylenol and they wanna make sure that it doesn't have any dangerous side effects for people. So they're gonna conduct these different studies on thousands or tens of thousands of people. They're gonna collect all of that data and they're gonna have someone like a healthcare analyst come in and help analyze that data and understand what kind of populations are being negatively affected or being positively affected. What are the unforeseen side effects that may be coming out of this? And that's gonna be very helpful for that doctor because he's really just helping collect the data. He's helping do this double blind study, but he can't collect all the data himself on 10,000 people and just know exactly what's gonna happen. You have to look at the data on a larger scale. And that's what a healthcare analyst would help with. Now let's take a look at something like the World Health Organization. They collect data from all over the world on a lot of different issues. 
One thing that I know the World Health Organization has a vested interest in is malaria. This would include a lot of data collection and data validation. So you're gonna work with a lot of different providers or individuals who are all around the world who are giving out malaria vaccines or who work in hospitals where malaria is very present. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna aggregate a lot of that data and you're gonna map it out and see where we're having larger outbreaks of malaria around the world. Now that's just one example, but the World Health Organization tracks hundreds of different diseases and lots of different things within their organization. Lastly, let's take a look at an insurance company because insurance is really big, especially in the United States, but there's a lot of insurance companies around the world. So within healthcare analytics, you're going to work a lot with claims data. Now, this is something we'll take a look at in a future video when we're looking all about the different types of data that healthcare analysts actually work with. And claims data is extremely, extremely common and extremely popular. What claims data is, is when you go to a doctor and you get, let's say a shot, well, you don't just give the money right to the doctor. The doctor has to bill the insurance company. That's your insurance that you pay for. They have to bill the insurance company and that creates a claim. The claim is then reviewed by the insurance company and then the insurance company pays it out. Now, we all know that's a very convoluted and very difficult process and it doesn't always work correctly, but that is essentially how it's supposed to work. So what healthcare analysts will often do is they'll work on that claim side. They're gonna see what type of claims are being denied and then they're gonna take a look into that and see if there's a reason for that. Maybe there's a specific claim that the insurance is denying at a really high rate, but people are kind of fighting back against that. They're sending in paperwork to review that denied claim. That's happening at increased rates for a specific uh, shot or procedure or whatever it is. This is where healthcare analysts can really, really be helpful. You can bring that to your boss and say, hey, we keep denying this kind of claim and it's costing us a lot of money because, because what's happening is people are sending in verification that this actually is something we should be covering and that's costing us a lot of time and manpower to be doing this. This might be something that we should actually be approving at a higher rate. Now that's a very simplified example. There's a lot more that goes on to it than that, but that is a very kind of simplified process of what a healthcare analyst would actually do at one of those insurance companies. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the education and the experience needed to become a healthcare analyst. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. You don't have to have these things, but typically working with healthcare data is very complicated. So if you don't understand or you don't know a lot about the healthcare system and how it works, it's gonna be really tough to get a job in healthcare analytics. So that typically means you need to have some type of background or experience in healthcare. You get a degree in healthcare administration or nursing. So that's an actual degree that's related to the healthcare field. It could also be on the therapy side side. So, you know, occupational or physical therapy, those are very common ones for people to kind of switch into the data side of things. But the other thing that I think is really important is actually having experience, because if you have a little bit of experience working or shadowing or mentoring or interning at an actual hospital, that can be very, very valuable. Back before I became a data analyst at healthcare analytic companies and then pharmaceutical distribution companies, I was actually working within the healthcare industry. So I was a recreational therapist, that is my background. But before that, I wanted to go to med school and then nursing school. And so I did a lot of internships and I had lots of experience kind of working with EHR systems in ER and therapy. And so I had a lot of kind of hands-on experience. And then when I wanted to break into the data side of things, that experience was actually really, really useful. Most companies that I interviewed actually asked if I had experience working with these EHR systems. And when I said yes, they were very, very happy to hear that. Now, lastly, let's talk about some of the tools that you're gonna use as a healthcare analyst. The number one tool that almost anyone just in analytics in general, but definitely in healthcare analytics is going to use is going to be Excel. Excel is gonna be something that you use to actually work with the data and manipulate it and change and aggregate and do all these things but it's also gonna be something that you use to communicate with you know, business partners or doctors who may not be as tech savvy and using something like SQL. SQL is definitely the next skill that I'm going to mention because SQL is something that you use to communicate and talk to and query data within databases. Now this may be stored within a SQL database or it could be in a CRM, but either way, they'll most likely use some type of SQL language to query and retrieve that data. The next thing that I recommend isn't necessarily a tool, although it kind of is, but it's getting experience within these EHR systems. They are very, very complex and having experience, even if you're just like downloading and messing around with some sample uh, EHR system, that is very, very valuable. After that, I highly recommend knowing some type of data visualization tool. Within healthcare analytics, genuinely, it's all over the place. And there's lots of really small tools that are used at different hospitals and different insurance companies. But knowing the more popular ones like Tableau and Power BI, you're gonna be able to use almost any other tool that they throw at you, as long as you have some experience creating visualizations. Lastly, knowing something like 
R or Python to do some type of statistics or some type of data manipulation with data frames is something that I definitely recommend, although not all companies are going to use them. They'll most likely be using things like Excel, SQL, some type of data visualization, and then knowing and working within an EHR system. So I know I just threw a lot at you. Believe it or not, that's just one part of multiple parts that we're gonna be talking about throughout this series. And just as a shout out to some of the other playlists that I have on this channel, if you want to learn things like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau, Python, all of these tools, I have full tutorials and full playlists on that you can learn for free. So I highly recommend doing that if you actually want to learn those skills. But I hope this video has been helpful because I will say when I broke into healthcare analytics and healthcare companies, I didn't know most of this. I really just started out with some of the basics and I wish I knew all of these things that I'm telling you right now, but I didn't have that knowledge at the time. And so hopefully this is very, very helpful to you. And I hope the rest of the series, when I launch you know, the next couple videos, those are also very helpful to you. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.